Uh, not so much that. It was more so just, you know, executing. Like, we talked about it during the weeks, like certain plays. And then, like, when they came up, you know, everybody getting on the same page and really just, you know, usual football. Like, Josh throwing around, the big guys blocking, receivers catching. It wasn't much more than that. More so just everybody really doing their job. Could you take us through the three touchdowns? I think the first one, was it a scramble drill or you just crossing and getting behind the linebacker there? It was kind of kind of a scramble drill. I'm going to say it was that. But I stole the touchdown from, I think, the tight end behind me, I think. So uh, he and said he was on the team. Did you two beers from fans? There? Yeah, I owe somebody like $18. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then the, uh, the, one, the long one down the sideline where you kind of spun out of the play. Try to catch the ball, break some tackles, make something happen. You know, I was a little tired after that. So. I got to work on my conditioning. And then tell us about the route that you ran on the, uh, the dreadlocks. Yeah, we had talked about it during the week, um, you know, trying to capitalize. Uh, I feel like, you know, in a game, things show up kind of a little different. So being on the same page with Josh is crucial, especially in those moments in the red zone. So capitalizing in the red zone has been a big thing for us, uh, as Mitch knows. So, uh, you know, I try not to make it more than what it was, but it's cool with that. Hey, Mickey Diggs, six catches, What's up, big guy? 120 yards. Three scores today. You, did, you talked about it this week about you know getting in that end zone. So how eager and how excited were you to go out there to make some plays with your guys out there? I was happy, you know. Uh, you know this football thing. You never, you never know how it's going to show up. You know what I'm saying? I kind of echo what Mitch says. He said, take it one moment at a time. And I feel like we came out with the right mindset. Uh, guys were blocking their ass off. And, you know, just those, the touchdowns, you know, it's all the glitz and the glam, but the big guys don't get enough credit for it. I need a lot of things to happen for me to catch the ball and me to make some plays. So I kind of want to give them all the credit. Hey, Mitch, uh, Josh had a perfect quarterback rating today, which is the first for him, believe it or not. Um, it just seemed like he had an answer for you kind of quantified it. I mean, what, did he have an answer for everything today? Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting when you're in the thick of the game. You just not to be cliche, coach talk. You do try to take it one moment at a time. Uh, you don't really understand what the highlights are, or I had no idea Dig <laughs> scored three touchdowns uh, until right now, and that just speaks to how uh, not only of a great competitor he is, but the tools he has, and, and just what he brings to this offense. Um, you know, I thought it was just a culmination of everyone doing their job. Mm -hmm. And uh, and when the number was called, no matter what the play, uh, I, I think the great thing about this team and this offense that's not everywhere is that no matter what play is called, you're excited to block for it or you're excited to you know do what's required for me because you know that there's an opportunity for a big play. Uh, on another note, I think it'd be it, – uh, I don't know if – I'm the most qualified person to speak on this, and Diggs might chime in more here. But, um, you know, a guy who uh, um, a guy who is not only a consummate professional, but is universally loved on this team, uh, went down today. And, um, you know, he, he's a guy that doesn't want the limelight. He would do conditioning. Before training camp practices, which I've never seen in my life, and uh, you know he, he's he's he does it for all the right reasons. And to see that today, I know it's the parody of this league. You saw it earlier with Tommy Doyle, but um, and I know a lot of people have spoken on it, but it's a damn shame. And, and hopefully, you guys keep him in your prayers because he. Uh, he means so much to this team yeah. and does it for all the right reasons. And he's a <clears throat> father of three. Uh, you know, this, this game means a lot to him. And being a good teammate and being there for his teammates means a lot to him. So uh, just keep him in your prayers, please. Steph, can you, you know you've gone against Trey and just your, and your, your emotions, your thoughts on Trey going down this It's been a rough week with some injuries, so. Um, it's a guy that really like uh, loves the grind. You know I'm saying like a true professional, but a lover of the game as well. Like it's crazy. You know I'm saying he uh, he really nursed himself back. Like, he really worked to get himself back into where he was, and to see him kind of get into a flow. It was it was rough. You know I'm saying I try to stay positive. You know I'm saying but like like Mitch said, like keep him in your prayers because. This game, people don't really understand it way on you. You're saying the good, bad, and the indifferent. And like with everything he had already been through, it's kind of tough. So, you know what I'm saying? Really keep him in your prayers because at this very moment, you know what I'm saying? It's just, 
it's easy just to be like it's unfortunate, but it means the world to him. Like football meant a lot to him. And you can tell that by how he works, how he grinds, how he approaches each and every day. He doesn't care, like he said, he don't really care about the limelight. He cared about the grind and really just being the best player and teammate he could be. So, yeah, I ask you to do more than just keep him in your prayers and really lift him up, you know what I'm saying? Because a time like this, uh, it, it's rough. Vince, there was uh, an I think the at the time you start getting complacent, you feel like you're clean is when stuff goes right. To your point, the guys have come in. I can speak in for Connor. It was such a different system for him, Cromer system. I've spoken on it before. And he's treated like a consummate professional, worked on it every day. And then when, when you have a rookie, a highly touted rookie who comes in, and I've said this before, excuse my language, you just hope he doesn't think his shit doesn't stink. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I, I – you know, he couldn't be more opposite. The guy's, uh, he's a sponge of information, great football player, you know, and he doesn't ride the roller coaster if he makes mistakes or not. And, uh, and I think he's going to be an amazing football player in this league. I think we all on the offensive line try to take it one day at a time. And we understand that there's still a lot to work on. Um, but when you, when, when you give guys like Steph or Josh opportunities to, uh, you know, you have that extra second, and kudos to Josh who gets us out of a lot of situations that might not be the most desirable with his legs, right? Um, I, I think we're just trying to compound on that, and I'm not going to take away anything from these tackles who are playing their ass off as well, who a guy like Spencer Brown and Deion Dawkins who um, really push themselves in practice, and it's showing, and you guys might not see it, but it's, it's showing on the field. So. Which is, which is, is, is What do you find out about this team, knowing that this is a week that all you heard about was Miami this, Miami that, um, and then you guys put up 48 points, 400 something yards, and you shut that deep, that that offense limited to 20 points. What does this week reveal to you? Well, uh, to be honest, I think this week, along with the last few weeks, we just really focused on in-house, keeping it. Like, we, we really don't care what the opponent's going to be doing. We really care about us. You know, and I think the thing we understand is that we can't beat ourselves out there on the field. Um, you know, kudos to them for, for doing that that past week. They deserve all the credit they get. I mean, putting up 70 points in this league is a remarkable feat. Um, and they're a great football team. They are. They're a fantastic football team. And uh, I think we can speak for all of us that even with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, down four scores, we were still feeling uneasy because of how explosive they could be. But, um, you know, for us, uh, every, you know, at halftime or every quarter we come out, I think, I think Steph will lose this every time we get on the field. Is like, you know, this is a clean slate, man. Like, what can we do this drive right now? And how can we be as effective in this drive? And uh, I think that really resonates with the guys. It's a good reset. And, uh, and we, really don't, we really don't calm down until the clock hits zero on this, mm-hmm. in this team. And uh, I think we're going to have to keep that up because this is very uncharacteristic in these last three weeks in this league, right? So we're going we're gonna to have these games that are – we're going to have to really fight through the end. And uh, we understand that this is kind of a rarity these past few weeks. Yeah. Well, I was just wondering what was uncharacteristic, just the way you want the, 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 how the scores have been decided? Just, yeah, I would say just the scores, yeah. Steph, you uh, coach Dorsey as you went out a lot today. It almost looked like it. Coach Dorsey wanted to give Miami a taste of their own medicine with how much they coached about offense. Can you speak to how often you were on the movie scene when we pre snap maybe more than you? I mean, probably like, I don't know. Y'all don't know how much tape y'all watch. So, like, but he, he's been putting me in motion for, you know what I'm saying, since last year. So it's been, it's been happening. It's just probably was much more visible because we played a team that motions a lot with their guys. But it wasn't so much their own medicine, but something that we was working on that we've been working on in the off season and training camp and stuff like that to, you know, kind of like get this offense in the right spot. I told you that we're working and we're trying to catch a stride right now. You know what I'm saying? Building that identity, what kind, what kind of team you want to be. And we got the right guys. So not so much that specifically, but we're doing everything we got to do to win at this point. And, you know, for me, 
Uh, he Mitch will tell you, approach each and every day. Um, we've gotten to a point where we made it like an earning mindset. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's going to be given to us. Stay humble, stay hungry, but each and every week, each and every day, we got to earn it. You know what I'm saying? We don't expect, can't expect to win if you don't earn it during the week. So just been, a pra uh, been approaching practice the right way. Mm -hmm. Stephon, you talk about the impact that the fans have had on you guys over the years. What kind of energy do you feel from them today? It sounded like there's a lot of that over it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we got the ball rolling downhill right now, especially with the fans and the momentum and the energy. Uh, they travel well, too. Like, even last week, uh, it seemed like it was a little bit of a home game. It got loud in there, and I was like, damn, it's, it's a proud moment. I'm saying, as a player, it's something that you look forward to. Like, I don't know what it's like to be somewhere and you don't hear your fans, like, especially this loud, you know what I'm saying, especially at home. Like, we need that. That gives our offense energy just as much as our defense. You know I'm of course, he'll quiet, he'll quiet them down. Josh will quiet them down a little bit, but it's something that gives you that little boost of energy that's, that, you know what I'm saying, it's live. We rocking and rolling. Steph, care to, talk about, <coughs> care to talk about Josh, you know, finding eight targets, you with the big game. How well is Josh managing these offense the past three weeks? I mean, I feel like, uh, you know, that our first game was a test as to how guys, how guys were going to play us and, you know what I'm saying, what we were going to see on a consistent basis. And I feel like Josh kind of um, put a lot on his shoulders, put a lot on himself. And you know how it is. It's a week-to-week -week league, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, like, I feel like the team that we played is a great team. I'm saying they do a lot of things exceptionally well. They got some great players and a great coach. I feel like each week is different. And as you know, as you see Josh Allen, he he adapts, he grows. You know what I'm saying, and I feel like uh, as a receiver, watching them and seeing them out there in action, I'm up close and personal. I see his emotions, I see his plays, and he's a quarterback that you want to play with. He's a quarterback that gives you that energy, gives you that belief, and he's a foot on the gas kind of guy. Like he's never done it until the whistles, whistle blows. So for me, uh, it's just something exciting. Like as we find ourselves as an offensive unit, I feel like uh, we just keep lining the weeds, keep grinding, and we'll be in the right spot. We got some, we got some help. We got some, we got some dogs. So I would say they have players, but they dogs as well, and it's starting at that quarterback position.